the CFP exam is tough with people spending months and months studying for this thing there's really only about a 60 percent pass rate on the entire exam so if you're studying for the cfp exam or just curious about it this video is going to break down exactly how i passed the exam and my step-by-step -step process for doing so that allowed me to come out honestly over prepared for the thing when i actually went and sat for it back in september so if you're excited for that do me a quick favor smack that like button and let me know in the comments below what is the hardest exam that you have ever taken i'm really curious to hear let's dive into the video so starting off with the basic info we're looking at about a six hour long exam so what you're looking at here folks is you've got two three hour sections and then each three hour section has an optional break in the middle of it, okay? And you got 170 questions. So how that shakes out is with a 42 question subsection, a 43 question subsection, then you break in the middle, then you've got another 42 and another 43. And so once you get to the end of the 42 and the 43, you can't go back to the last one. So the exam used to be set up like this, where there was just like a beginning half, an ending half, and a break in the middle. But how they changed it, my exam was actually the first exam cycle to use this new change, was they give you 42 questions and then to get to the next 43 you have to kind of close the page on the first 42 and say okay i'm not going to come back to these which was a bit of a challenge for me we'll get into that in a little bit but the exam is set up again like i said 170 questions it's all multiple choice most of those are going to be standalone questions but then there are also a couple case studies scattered throughout that could be anywhere from like three questions all the way up to like 15 questions where they'll give you some facts or like a full case and then you'll have to answer questions based on that case. You'll have like 15 questions based on the information basically provided in that case. So that's the exam in a nutshell, pretty straightforward. And the content of the exam is gonna be split up across eight different categories of subject matter that you gotta know as a CFP, Certified Financial Planner. And those are, first off, we've got Professional Conduct and Regulation. That's gonna be 7% of the exam. Again, these are kind of just rough numbers, so it's not hard and fast rules here, but this is generally what you can expect on this exam. So. Professional conduct and regulation, 7%. General principles of financial planning, 17%. So we're talking like basic stuff about managing money, all that jazz that goes into financial planning. Next, we've got education planning at 6%. We're talking like saving for college, how much money you gotta set aside, talking about inflation, things along those lines. Next, we've got risk management and insurance planning. This is really important. We're talking life insurance, health insurance, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, all of these super important types of insurance. We're talking investment planning, 17%, so one of the bigger categories there. We got tax planning at 12. We have retirement savings and income planning at 17, also a very important one, and estate planning at 12. So add those all up, I think you get 100, but that just shows you how wide ranging this exam is, and it's not broken up based on different categories. So the questions are gonna be interwoven within each other. There's not like a tax section, and then an investment section, and then a retirement section. It's all interwoven together, and most questions are gonna hit on like two to three of these all within the same question. So there's a lot going on in this exam and it is quite a doozy to take on. But now let's talk about my study plan that I used to actually pass this thing. So I went with Dalton and there's, there's a bunch of kind of test provider review things that you can do. I personally chose Dalton because it was relatively cheap compared to the other options and I heard good things about it on Reddit. So that was enough, I was sold, you know, <laughs> I was sold on it. So it was 1300 bucks to do this program, which is kind of pricey, but in the grand scheme of things, if it, if it opens the door for me to, to run my own wealth management company, I'd say it's a pretty worthwhile investment into my business. And that was also pretty motivating for me to be like, okay, I guess I have to pass this thing because I just dropped 1300 bucks in the review session. And that's not to mention like the seven or 800 bucks the exam actually costs. So all in to take this exam, I was like two grand in the hole. So I was like, shoot, we gotta like make this thing happen. If I just wasted two grand and months of my life, that would be pretty stupid. So I bought this Dalton review package when I was in Laos back in February or March, it was either late February, or early March. I bought this program and I started going through it right away. I wasn't really taking it too seriously though because I was in Asia just having fun, fooling around, you know, as, as you do as like a 21 year old. So I was just enjoying my time in Asia, but I had this thing, I bought it and I was slowly starting to go through maybe a couple hours a week I would spend on this program. And I didn't actually test for the exam until September and I just counted on my fingers and I think it's seven months from when I bought it to when I tested. So that's like over half a year that I was spending reviewing for this exam. And I didn't start to take it very seriously until I got back from Asia. So that was middle of April, I got back. And so once I got back, that was when I really got serious about my studying. So let's kind of break down what that looked like step by step. So the first thing that I got serious about was there's a weekly live review every single Monday night for three hours, three hours, three and a half hours that I would hop on. And basically they were going through the entire curriculum, okay? because Dalton, the program that I signed up with, they've got a full kind of curriculum of everything you need to know for this exam. And like 
they're not teaching you everything. It's a review session. So they're, they're spending three and a half hours per night for, I think it's like 12 weeks. So like 40 hours of content basically that they're reviewing with you for this singular exam, which is, it's really a ton of content guys. Like it's super overwhelming. Like on those three and a half hour sessions, I would take like pages on pages on pages of notes because they're like going through stuff. They're going through like hundreds of slides a night. It was like bananas. Like there's so much you got to know for this exam. So that was the first thing that I was doing is I was showing up to those review sessions every single Monday night. Now beyond that, Dalton also sends you like five or six wonderful textbooks that each go into the different sections that I outlined earlier. We we're talking about the percentages and the breakdowns and whatnot. So I had these six wonderful textbooks that I got to go through. And my, my plan with those, they, they give you a whole like study calendar. I didn't use that. I didn't even look at that. I was like, you know what? I don't need this. I'm going to figure it out myself uh, because I, I just, I don't like to be told what to do most of the time. So I was like, okay, I got these six books. So my plan was like, okay, I'm going to read each book cover to cover. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and take notes on them and like make out note cards because for me, I mean, I've never really used note cards. So I just kind of thought it was the thing to do. I'd heard from other people like, oh, you should make note cards. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll make note cards. But I read the things cover to cover. And what I did for this was I was staying with my parents at the time because I, I flew back from Asia kind of unexpectedly because the whole kombucha 19 thing happened. So I was staying with my parents. They got a treadmill in the basement. So I was just walking on that treadmill, turned up the incline, put it at like three miles an hour and was just reading these textbooks for like hours at a time. Um, and it was, it was honestly really great. Like I really enjoy reading and walking on the treadmill. I've been doing that for like years. Uh, when I was in college too. So like, I really enjoyed that. So I was doing that, reading the thing through. And then afterwards, once I'd read the whole thing through, then I would sit down on my desk and I'd get out my, my huge stack of note cards that I had and a pen. And I would just like make note cards on everything. And like, by the end of this thing, I had hundreds and hundreds of note cards. And the thing is, I like never used them. Okay. I wrote out all these note cards. I never used them to review because I'm just not the note card type of person. And I think note cards can be great if you're like, out and about a lot, but just with the whole state of the world, I really didn't leave my house very much. So I was really at home all the time. So instead of doing note cards, I was doing practice questions, which we're going to get to in a little bit, but I think are a lot more valuable when you're studying for this exam than note cards are, at least in my case personally. So that takes us through the first couple of weeks of studying. I was working my way through these books. I was doing the online stuff and I was also doing some practice questions here and there because with Dalton, you've got like a, a library of like 2000 practice questions online that you can just like hop into whenever you want. They can be sorted by category. So like as I got through the first book, Book, I would go through and do practice questions on the, the stuff in that book. Once I got through the second book, I do practice questions on the second book, plus some stuff from the first book, just to make sure it's still fresh in my mind. So that process honestly lasted me for weeks. And throughout that entire time, one thing that I was also doing was I was listening in to all of the previously recorded sessions, uh, like those things I was going to on Monday night, basically, I would rewatch those. And there were other ones happening at other times during the week with other instructors. And I would pretty much always be listening to those. Like anytime that I would normally be listening to like a podcast or music, like at the gym or going for a walk, like all of these times I would just be plugged in, had my earbuds in with the, the review sessions for the CFP exam playing. And so that was the soundtrack to my life for a solid, like three or four months, which honestly turned out to be really helpful because I could hear from multiple different instructors, teaching multiple different ways, giving different perspectives and ways to memorize things and all that good stuff. So I found that really effective because there, there would be some instructors that would do a really good job at teaching some things, but not other things. So getting that mix was really, really helpful for me. And so, yeah, being able to basically just always be in CFP mode was, I mean, it was kind of exhausting a little bit, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I, again, I paid two grand for this thing. If I fail this exam, I'm going to have to wait like months and months to retake it. And then I'm going to have to keep studying for more months. And like, this is just going to suck. So I want to pass this thing. I want to do it right. So I, my, my whole philosophy was like better to be overprepared than underprepared. So I was grinding through these, these books, listening in all the time. And then once we were about two to three months away, that's when I started hitting the practice questions really hard. Okay. I was doing about a hundred practice questions a day minimum for about three months out from when my exam actually was. And so that allowed me to get through, I mean, thousands, like, like I said, they got like 2000 or so 2,500 maybe practice questions in this test bank. I made it all the way through the test bank at least twice, maybe like two and a half times. So I was doing thousands and thousands and thousands of practice questions. And that is really what allowed me to, to be so prepared for this thing. Cause like, there's nothing like doing practice questions for an exam, you know, because the, the practice questions, at least for Dalton, they're written so well. And like, honestly, I feel like the Dalton questions are even a little bit harder than the real questions for the most part. I mean, like on the actual exam, a lot of the questions are really freaking hard, but they also throw in a fair number of a pretty easy questions. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're talking about. So, I think if you are able to like really nail those Dalton questions, you can have a, a really solid foundation for, for passing this exam because 
those questions are super representative, if not even tougher than the questions on the actual exam itself. And one thing that I did with the practice questions that I think was super, super valuable is I started this Google document, okay? And like, if you're studying for this exam, I would totally recommend, listen to this right now, and I would say, do this, okay? I started this Google document, and on this Google document, what I did was anytime I got a question wrong, I would put a bullet point, and I would put like, why I got the question wrong, you know, like, or, or the information that if I would have known that, I would have got it right. So, for example, if, if there was a question that says like, which of these is more volatile, like stocks or bonds? And I said, bonds, okay? And the answer was stocks, then, in my Google Doc, I would write stocks are more volatile than bonds and just put that in there. And that's information. Okay. And so I just kept doing that. Okay. And I actually organized it by like the different topic section. So like I would have that under like fundamentals or whatever. And then periodically I would go back through that Google Doc and I'd be like, oh, I know that now. I like really know that stocks are more volatile than bonds. So I would delete it off of there. And so basically what I had was a running list of all the stuff that I didn't know that, that I needed to know for this exam. And so I would just keep going through this list, keep reviewing it, keep reviewing it, keep reviewing it. And then periodically I just like go through and be like, okay, I know that I, I still don't really have that locked in. So I'm going to leave that on the list. And so over time, I was able to get the list smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And like at one point, it was like 20 pages long. And you know, this list was crazy. But then as we got closer and closer to the exam, I was deleting more stuff. I was getting more honed in. And by the time the actual exam happened, I think we were down to like three or four pages, which is like still a lot of stuff that I like didn't really have 100% ironed out. But it was it was like not too much that I didn't pass the exam. So that was the practice questions. And then we had even more live review sessions. Like I said, I was going to that three and a half hour a night thing every Monday for like 12 weeks. Well, closer to the exam, they had another one of those. It was supposed to be in person, but because of the whole state of the world, it was online. And it was 10 hours a day for four days in a row, which is bananas. Okay, so it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 hours a day. You show up at like 10 a.m. You're done by 6 p.m., I think. Nope, that's only eight hours. I don't know, it was 10 hours, I think it was 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or something like that. But it was it was absolutely wild, okay? So they basically condensed uh, the whole 12 week thing into four days and it was just, there was so much information being thrown at me. But at that point, we were like a month out from the actual exam. So I was feeling really confident about a lot of stuff, didn't have to take nearly as many notes. And it was great because it was a different instructor this time. So I was able to get even more perspectives from different instructors. And during this period, Anytime that I was not in that 10 hour session, I was listening. Okay. Like constantly listening. I was always like out for a walk or the gym or whatever, listening, 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 getting as much information as I could. And this was like the whole month up to the exam. I was just like always listening. That was like my, my, I don't even know. Like I said, soundtrack to my life right there for a full month was just listening to CFP review lectures. Sounds riveting. I really enjoyed it personally because I'm a huge nerd, but um, it is something that you might want to consider doing if you want to make sure you pass this thing on the first time around. So all in all, I'd say I probably spent about 500 hours studying for this thing actively, maybe another 250 hours just listening to content whenever I was going through my day-to-day -day life. But now let's talk about my ex actual experience at the exam itself, because that was what I did leading up to it, but how did the actual exam go? Well, walking into this exam, I was stressed the stress out. You know, I was like tweaking a little bit because I was so nervous. I was like, you know what? If I failed this thing, like that would suck so much. I spent all of these months spending so many hours studying for this GD exam only to not pass. That would be so devastating. So I was really, really stressed out. And I, I showed up like an hour early, honestly. Like I was the first person there. I was like waiting in the hallway, listening to like pump up music for like an hour. Just like, I'm, I'm going to pass this exam. It's going to be great. We're going to crush this. And so I was getting super pumped up and they actually let me start the exam early because they're like, oh my God, this kid's been here for like an hour. Let's just like let him in and let him get started. This is ridiculous. So I, I got in, I got started. I was, I was tweaking out, but knowing myself, I work really fast through exams. Okay. Like I was always like the first person done in college with exams. I would always like turn it in first, leave before like anybody else had, had even finished. So I'm very quick with exams. So I, I knew that I had to like slow myself down and really be careful that I didn't go too fast. So I got through the first like 30 questions in like 30 minutes, which was like way too fast. Um, and then I was like, oh shoot, I really got to slow down because I'm almost to the end of that first little 42 question bit. And at that point, I won't be able to go back to those questions. So I ended up spending not enough time in those first 42 questions. And I didn't really go back and review all my answers because I was so stressed out that like I, I wasn't gonna have enough time for the second bit. So essentially what happened was I got through the first 42 questions in about an hour, okay? And so at this point, I'm one hour into my three hours that I have for these first two subsections, okay? <laughs> if you can follow this, I'm, I'm proud of you. But I had half an hour left. I was gonna spend an hour and a half in each subsection. And so I spent the next half hour reviewing about half of the questions that I did in the first subsection, like going through doing my math again and just making sure that I had the correct answer. And I was feeling pretty good about those questions that I reviewed, but I didn't get to review the second kind of 20 or so 
of the questions in that first subsection because then I wanted to move on to the second one because I was like, you know what? I gotta make sure that I have enough time for this one. But I got through the second one, I flew through that thing so fast, the questions were so easy. I was like, oh my gosh, give me a hard question, come on now. So I flew through that one in like 45 minutes and then I went back and reviewed it and it would only been like an hour and I had like an extra half hour of time and I was like, oh, I really wish I had this time to, to go back and review the first subsection because I didn't actually make it through all the questions in there to review. But uh, it turns out we didn't even need to because I mean, we passed. So uh, that was that. was that. So then I finished the, the first half about half an hour early because I was like, I reviewed all my answers. I feel really good about these. I was feeling really good about my answers, guys. Like when I went back and reviewed, I was like, oh, that's the right answer. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. And so I, I was feeling really, really good at that point. So then you get like a 30 minute break. So I went outside, walked around, ate some protein bars, came back and did the second half. It really went very smoothly the second half. I, I really paced myself very well. I spent an hour and a half in both of the subsections, had enough time to review all of my answers and pretty much waited till the very last minute to submit my exam because I was like, you know, I paid for all of these minutes. I might as well take advantage of them. And so I ended up being like the, the second or third to last person to leave, even though I started before everybody else. So I was in there for a long time. But when I pressed that final submit button, my heart was racing. It was jumping out of my chest. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is like make or break. And then on my screen, I saw the word pass and I was like, oh, we did it. We did it. We did it. It's, it's done. I can forget about this. Like this is wonderful. So that was, I mean, that was my whole process, guys. It was really just like being all in on CFP mode for like months. And I realized like during Kombucha 19 and during like me not really having a job and just kind of doing my own thing online, like it, it's a lot easier for me to study for this thing than someone who has like kids or obligations or a full-time job. Like I totally understand that, but I think if you can just spend as many of your waking hours as possible in CFP world and just like listen to stuff when you can and, and do practice questions when you can and just like hit it as hard as you can, you're gonna thank yourself when you get that pass message because if you don't, it's gonna suck to redo that thing. I mean, I've heard people say they've done it like four times and I'm like, oh, I can't even imagine, dude, going through that four times. I'm like, oh, one time was more than enough for me. So. That's, that's my story. Hopefully that's helpful for you if you're studying for the TFP exam yourself or if you're just curious. Now the next thing you should do is click the subscribe button down below and check out this video over here where I dive deep into how to actually become a CFP, all the rules and regulations you need to meet because passing the exam is just one small part of the entire process of becoming a CFP. So make sure you check that video out and I'll see you over there.